but how to kind of build a brand to separate yourself from the competition. I think that's my biggest, the, the one I want to focus on. Yeah, so I got my uh, my license back in April of uh, 2018. So really fresh, green uh, mortgage loan officer. Wanted to make a switch into a new industry. Um, thought, it, thought it would be a dynamic, fun industry to work in. Um, you know, and I bit started with Mortgage Master, uh, based out here in the Seattle area. Um, and what led me to want to explore other opportunities is I just wasn't getting the training, the know-how, like uh, getting taught on like scripting, all those things that'll kind of uh, speed you up in the process of becoming what would look like a veteran out there, you know, and what that's why one of my favorite videos you had was that why bring, being a brand new mortgage officer uh, can actually be like your greatest asset. Yes. Um, and how you walk through that, how you can use it to your advantage to kind of step up your game and really be able to compete with those guys that have been in the industry like 10, 15, 20 years that are, you know, have the game down. Um, right. so yeah, I'm joining absolute mortgage, uh, actually changing my license over should hopefully drop tomorrow with a new company. Um, and they're really focused on having the training, the marketing support, everything you kind of need to, to get going and, and, uh, accelerate your career. Nice. Um, nice. And they're really supportive of finding outside coaching and training to help with that. I mean, they're really uh, versed of, have you heard of the, the core? That's kind of one. A lot of the people that I work I work with have gone through that training. So oh, okay, no, I haven't heard about it, but I'll definitely look into it. How do yeah, you? Yeah, uh, Jack. Uh, what is it? Rick Ruby. If you look him up on YouTube, he's kind of an old. God, he old, reminds me like an old military dude. Okay, uh, but his, one of his funniest videos is one on prospecting, 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 prospecting. <laughs> yeah. How many calls are you making on Mondays? What are you doing each and every day? They're they're funny, but nice, know. nice. Now, are you on the retail side or the in uh, call center? Uh, retail side. Okay. So you're out in the field trying to build yep. relationships, trying to build up those referral, uh, relationships, partnering with, you know, uh, realtors, of course, but trying to expand beyond that, you know, with working with people in escrow title, you know, I've been part of a couple different leads groups too, where you're interacting with financial planners, those kind of things. Nice. So. Nice. How did you find the uh, channel? Uh, God, it was one of those ones. I think I just stumbled upon it on YouTube and, you know, I liked each one I've uh, watched of yours. I've really liked your, your reel about it. You can tell your personality behind it. You know, it's not, uh, God, how would I put it best? It's not like a cheesy script that you're working off of. <laughs> yeah. it, it's firsthand knowledge of somebody that's been into the industry, seen the game, see the, the difficulties and face them yourself. So it really is something I can relate to each and every video you've posted. Nice, nice. Well, I'm excited to deliver, you know, direct mentoring, offer any help that I can give to you individually yeah. with your specific challenge. Um, but before we begin, I, if anything, I'd like to just cover a few questions with you to kind of get your input. And I, I ask that you just be completely honest, you know, speak from the hip. And, and these are probably the questions that you prepared for. Um, the very first one was, what was a problem you had before discovering at Sales Remastered that I may have helped you with? Okay. Yeah. And that was one... Um... I, I go back to that video of how to overcome that newness, you know, when you're, because people can sniff that out that have been in the, the industry a long time and just, uh, you know, you delved into your, your work ethic, um, how you got to just use that to up your game. You know, you want to prove people wrong. Like, yeah, I can, I can crush it my first year. You know, I can get up yeah. to the, um, the new company I'll be working for. They have what's called the diamond, uh, level, you know, nice. where you, and I went to the first meeting and went where they put those people's faces up on, uh, on the screen. You get to see the kind of numbers that they're doing. That's yeah. That's where I want to get to. Yep. Um, and so that video has definitely helped flip the switch and, uh, the switch, uh, the script of not just saying, Hey, I'm new, but will you work with me? But showing, working around that uh, as a hindrance and more as a, a motivation to just work harder. Okay, cool. So it was really just kind of breaking into the field, being a little bit comfortable with your with your experience level. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. And just kind of seeing the silver lining, whereas most kind of look at it as a detriment or a setback. Yeah. Okay. Or cool. yeah, it's something like, you know, a lot of people out there is like, oh, it's going to take you three to five years till you're at all, you know, making it in, in this industry. You know, I'm like, I don't have three to five years yeah. <laughs> to yeah. back and wait. You know, so I want to find avenues that are like, I want to get it done in my first year. You know, be, it'd be, you know, my overall goal right now is just to be doing four transactions a month, which I think is, is modest and uh, attainable. But then oh, yeah. just keep going from there because I saw the numbers of how many transactions some of those guys in that diamond uh, club are doing. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely an income bracket we want to reach, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, that was fun, you know, with that whole video and how at the end, you know, that was you that actually was the, the kid you were talking about, that that newbie that everyone's like, whoa, how do you get up there? <laughs> yeah. How's, how's this young guy getting up there that fast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. I appreciate you, I appreciate you watching, sharing your feedback on that. Um, you know, the, the point of view that you have is, is not only very interesting to me, but is very relevant to the community because there are many, many loan agents who are coming into the industry now and who are somewhat new to the industry. So it becomes kind of like this new language. It's this new environment. It's this new type of pressure. It's, you know, yeah. it's a, it, it's sales in general, but really in all essence, there's a lot of factors that are involved in order to properly prosper within this environment in order to win. And yeah. what I really like is, um, you know, the point of view that you give it, a lot of the audience members at sales, you master is going to be able to relate to because they weren't necessarily in the industry for too long. And you're coming in with, with, with kind of depending on the environment, there's this energy that's being put out where if you're influenced in the wrong way, it could really hold you back. Yeah. And that that is basically being given off by loan officers who were not in the industry, but may have came in during the refi boom and now are already jumping ship like they're doing something completely different. And um, I think it's it's interesting to, you know, kind of hear your feedback because there are a lot of loan officers who got into the industry expecting kind of one specific way or, or reaction or result aren't seeing it. And then they get into kind of this panic mode where yeah. they're like, oh, no, no, did I, you know, am I late to the party? Did I miss out on the opportunity? And um, I want to assure you, you know, there are a lot of loan officers. My, my company is growing very strong. As you may know, I, I work with New American Funding and yeah. um, our, our, our business is up, you know, and, and, and in, in an environment where a lot of companies are actually shutting their doors and they're, they're downsizing, we're growing. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's helpful to me and I'm blessed because I get to give the insight of what's enabling us to prosper and share it with the community for those who are in an environment that's not. Yeah. So, um, you know, talking about your, your, your experience level, what, what, you know, what's the frustration feel like? Like when you're coming in and, and you are somewhat new, can you elaborate on that and explain like what is, you know, um, uh, kind of just what you're experiencing right now, like how it's hitting you emotionally and, and if, if at all, it's kind of giving you discouragement? Yeah. So like you talked about, it's, it's, it's sales, but it's very much focused on, uh, it, it's so much different than like car sales, anything else out there. There's so many more facets involved in it. And that's, you know, when I looked at my uh, current branch manager that I'm going to be moving away from, when I asked for training, it's all about, you know, like the lingo, the the talk, how you're going to interact with realtors, because th those are going to be really key partnerships to have. Um, right. And just knowing, you know, how to discuss rates with uh, clients that are, you know, out rate shopping like everybody is right now. Everyone's right. out there trying to find the lowest common denominator, but how to sell a higher price package, you know, all those kind of things. You need to have that scripted down so you can throw it off like out, uh, off the cuff, you know, rather than, oh, here, let me call my manager or here, let me look through my book and find my notes on that. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's one of the ones because my previous industry I worked in for like 15 years in the um, spirits industry. So wine, beer and spirits was either selling it or managing warehouse like involved in that. So I knew it like the back of my hand, um, but everything was consolidating that industry. And that's why I jumped ship. And sure. You know, probably not the easiest industry for sure. And kind of a weird time to jump in um, with, like you say, the market changed. Like from when I got my license to now, it's changed even in that short period pretty drastically with the rate increases and, you know, the shortcoming on the, the refis. But um, yeah, my biggest hindrance, how that hits is just feeling kind of like a rookie. I haven't felt that way for for years. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't hit the psyche that hard, but mm -hmm. I, I want to get past that and work through it as quick as possible. Nice, nice. And if you could take me to a time where some of the lessons or shares that I've given on the channel has helped you overcome that? Yeah, uh, I would say one where I ended up before watching some of your videos, I was just going to let this uh, relationship pass. It was a realtor. He's been in the industry like 15 years. He's working with friends that I got pre-approved, but I had like a really bad first conversation with him. Like I, I felt like I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, it happened on Columbus Day. It's because I couldn't get him pricing. And I was like, because mm -hmm. the markets are shut down. There's no, I can't get you like a firm rate. And he was like, well, what was it on Friday? Give me a ballpark. And so I ended up getting off the phone with him. I was like, crap, he's probably going to try to move my my friends to his more, his lender, you know, somebody, uh, but ended up calling him the next day and just tried to focus on 
like a real relationship, not talking about, you know, numbers, anything like that. Just be like, Hey, I've, you know, got their friends of mine. I'm going to take great care of them. I'm going to work through them and really walk them through the whole loan process. I'm here to help support you too, as a realtor partner. And we're, we're going to keep working with the, the clients. So nice. I think it saved that relationship instead of just going, okay, well, screw that one up. Just let that fall by the wayside, focus on other real, uh, realtors, but having the, uh, the, I guess the balls, if you will, to just call them back and say, Hey, let's, what did I do wrong? How can I, you know, interact with you on a different level? And right. uh, it was a great phone call actually. Nice, um, nice. So before watching your videos and just seeing like having that real factor, that authentic uh, approach to things, I think is what I've gathered from a lot of your videos. Super important, especially in the retail side of it. Um, just cause the, the realtors can, can really sense whether or not that you're being genuine or you're just being, kind of that that salesman that just wants that just sees the realtor as a number and yeah. <laughs> realtors are, are much like us you know they're going to protect their book of business because that's their image that's their reputation you yeah. know so okay cool so um it it sounds like you've kind of already experienced um content that's being given out like the core content yeah um uh, different kind of personalities online that shares value what's something that that you notice is different with at sales remastered versus the others um, well, for one, I think just the, it's authentic. It's coming from a perspective where you can relate. I can relate with you a lot more than some of the other coaches that I've seen on the core. I can, um, you're there and not just like having to go to a web page. You're on all fast, you know, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, you're, you're easy to find. And it's something like, say I'm having a, a shit day at work. I can just kind of jump on your channel on the phone in the car kind of watch that as I'm driving along and, and get outside of a negative mindset, you will, uh, if you will. So I like that uh, accessibility that you have is great. Nice. Um, and yeah, you're, you're of my age. I don't know how old you are, but I'm 38. I think I can relate to you pretty well. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's coming from this really high authoritarian figure, even though you're, you're out crushing the game. Yeah. But it's not like you're, you're feeling like you're talked down to. Yeah. 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 That's cool, man. Yeah, I turned 38 in a month. So we're oh, the same age. Yeah. We're both eighties <laughs> babies, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, yeah, I just did this, like, uh, somebody made this meme, it was like, or it was this, uh, something on Facebook was like, how old are you? And say it in, like, you know, uh, relatable things that were around when you were born. I was like, pretty much pre-internet, pre, like, debit <laughs> cards, uh, pagers were around, you know? Yeah. Makes me feel pagers. Old when I think about yeah, pagers. Yeah. <laughs> Party lines. Yo, <laughs> call me back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Cool, man. So I appreciate that input. Uh, well, it's one, and it's the the next part that I was kind of concentrating on, and that you do talk about it uh, a bit is uh, kind of building your brand. You know, like who you are, what what differentiates you as a as a lender or as a you know a loan advisor, if you will, uh, versus a competition. What why should I work with you? Um, how do you go about building that? Cause I'm basically going to be restarting with moving on to a different company. Um, they do have, what's really great about them. They have a, a green room studio that I'll get to use to, to nice. make little commercials or something out there to throw out there, but how to kind of build a brand to separate yourself from the competition. I think that's my biggest, the, the one I want to focus on. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I definitely have experience with that. Um, just cause I, you know, the, as long as I've been in the industry, I've not, I, you know, I haven't worked with one particular mortgage lender the entire time. The yeah. current lender that I'm working with now, I'm going on my, my five years. So I'm fortunate to have found a platform that I can grow with. And, yeah. uh, and I, it's very hard sometimes, uh, especially in this industry, because new companies popping up and, and some companies are folding down. And, and a lot of the companies that you want to um, kind of penetrate or at least enter, they have this long list of requirements and, and, and features that you need to meet in order for them to even consider an interview. And yeah. so it does take some time to, to, you know, build your, your, your path to, to enter into that type of in, uh, environment. But, uh, as far as building a brand, you know, um, I, I shared some information on a three part series that had to do with that really was going to help out retail loan officers. And yeah. um, that three part series ended on with how to generate leads. And um, what's unique is that you have kind of the the access to some of the tools that really does hold loan officers back in actually starting it. Then the next step is having the mindset to just put yourself out there and really do it. And it's basically access to that green room. You see, the I would say that, in my opinion, in order to properly brand yourself, the sooner that you could start, the better. 
Yeah. And the, the, the perfect way to go about it is to create something that's not necessarily tied to the business that you work with right now because things do happen, things do yeah. change. And, and naturally, as the market evolves, you may not necessarily be, in a, and I hope you are you know, with them long term, but at the end of the day, let's be real, the chances are, are that there could be another opportunity that you grow in as you become more seasoned right, and become yeah. more experienced. And what what happens is if it if it's something that you control, if it's something that's under your account, kind of like my, you know, my Facebook and my YouTube and my Instagram, those are my accounts. And yeah. so if for whatever reason I were to move on from my current employer, that would follow me and that would be with me. I own that. Yeah, and, that's like your brand, like sales remastered following you. Versus, yeah. Like, okay, I lost, I'm not not with them anymore. I got to build a whole brand new one. Exactly, exactly. Um, but you'll notice also, like I could have went a different route and just said, you know what, um, I'm just going to do it all about mortgage loans. I'm just going to do it all about uh, generating leads for mortgage, mortgage deals. And fortunately, one of the strongest perks of being with my company is that we are very strong with marketing. So I think that's already handled. Like I'll always have a stream of business plus my my tenure and my seniority there i've created this long list book of business i still survive yeah. on to today and this is how i'm able to you know generate a lot of my current deals but um if i were a new loan officer coming into a retail platform or a retail outfit and just starting brand new what i would recognize first is who ultimately i want to target and ultimately what you want to target is the the end consumer it's yeah. not necessarily the realtor, right? Those realtors are just your bridge to get to the end consumer. And the end consumer, as we look at it as loan originators, are ultimately the leads. It's it's the contact information of people who are interested in the services that we generate, that we provide, right? Yeah. And so realtors come into mind, CPAs come into mind. And of course, we need that ability to generate a relationship. But the underlying question is, well, why? Why do I need to generate that relationship? And it's because you're ultimately looking for streams of of leads that people who are interested in what service you can deliver. Yeah. And so if we focus on that, then we understand that there are two sides of the coin. There's a there's one where you can generate the leads that ultimately become the piece of value you can deliver to the same people you're trying to generate or create that relationship with. Yeah. And now, so the question is, okay, well, well, how can I get the main route, which are basically interested people, and that's where the social media game comes in. Um, I, you know, a lot of our attention naturally because of the technology and the advancement of technology and communication are being put on different platforms that that are already in front of us, that our attention is already at, and it's social media. And every single sale, every single relationship starts with attention. The same way that you and I now are connected yeah. is because at some point you caught my content on a stream that your eyes were already on. And now, you know, as you've seen, you know, depending on how long you've been following the content, the content is 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 growing and growing and growing. And ultimately, now I have a community of loan officers, but can we do this with consumers? And I think we can. We definitely can. And, um, you know, one of the things that I had mentioned in that video is that when you when some loan officers try to build a brand, uh, quote unquote, is is they'll go full stream on their company meaning that, hey, I'm the loan officer here, and then they got all you know the NMLS license numbers, the fine print, the disclosures, the APRs. And yep. I think, in my opinion, that that is a handcuff because not only does that company now own that, that, that collateral, but it also limits you on the personality that you could bring because you can't necessarily be yourself. You have to be this professional, sharp individual. And yep. there's nothing wrong with that, but I believe that you're going to remind a lot of the end consumers, the people who we're actually trying to connect with, you're going to remind them that they're watching a, a TV commercial. You're going to remind them that they're watching an advertisement or put them in a state of mind where they're not going to necessarily give you the full attention. And so we have an option where we could present content that is viewed at as an advertisement or a commercial, or we can have the option to deliver fun facts and information that you and I have sole access to. And yeah. those fun facts have anything to do with credit improvement, um, you know, important things you need to do with with when you do decide to enter into escrow, um, key players within the purchase process, 
um, you know, how to find the, the best insurance quote, how to find the best realtor, how to find the best school district. These are important things that home buyers need to consider, but don't necessarily consider because they simply do not know. Yeah. And so you and I, since we're already in, in these trenches and in this environment, we now have the commodity that a lot of people are really, really looking for. And the best part about it is we can deliver it to them without it being so much of a sale, meaning we can deliver the message to them on the streams that their attention is already on or that they're, they're already paying attention to at their convenience. So, yep. so not only that, but when they get time to actually view it, they can then share it with their community. And now you're penetrating new networks. And so how this translates is basically like we'll use um, credit scores, right? Because I think credit and, and just understanding of how credit works is something that applies to anyone, regardless if you're a homeowner or not, right? And sometimes if we give out too much content like, hey, this five things you should do before you buy a home. Well, the person who watches that could it could only really apply to them. But imagine if they had some content that they can then share with people who also have credit score. And I think we all have that common bond where we have this credit score and we all as consumers who are not in the industry have questions of how does that work? It's a science that not too many people really understand. Yeah. And so fortunately you can capture a lot of this content information through the resources that we have, but also just free online. And then we can do what's called curate it. We're curating the information and content and basically um, repurposing the same content that we learned. Now granted, we gotta you know make sure that the content that we're, we're we're giving is actually legitimate it's it's real you know we yeah. can just get some content off a blog from <laughs> this one person what he said you know we actually had to do a little bit of research so that could be kind of the tedious part of it but the best part is though is that when you create that piece of content it now lives forever on that particular page yeah. and so i think that the the common destination that a lot of the attention is going to go towards from the end consumer is going to be of course social media it's going to be still blogs it's going to be videos and if you're comfortable with doing video, I think that's going to be a huge advantage over someone who, you know, just necessarily does it on audio. It doesn't necessarily mean that audio is not going to play an important game, but but video is naturally going to catch someone's attention because they get to watch. It's it's there. We're wired to watch TV. We're wired to watch movies. That's true. Yeah. And I now it's I just refining the delivery of it. And that's something that fortunately I've had, um, you know, February of next year will be the second year anniversary of of doing this content creation and i've i've followed a lot of different virtual mentors on how to learn how to craft the story how to craft the message and you know i spent a lot of time in trying to study that craft now it's just about making the time and that's why a lot of my content being delivered you'll see me coming home from the gym yeah or or yeah. in route to work you know, yeah. or these little one offs that I do, um, you know, here in my in my home office, but I'm just I'm kind of making the time and, and I get asked a lot like, well, how do you find the time to do all this content? And in all reality, what it allowed me to 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 find the time was breaking down the wall that stops a majority of people from making content. And it's the perception that they need to be perfect. It's the perception that they need to have the right shirt on, that they need to have the right tie, that they need to have the right background, right? Yeah. And and I think that holds up a lot of people. And at the same time, even if they do have those resources, it limits them from being genuine. And I think that that's an important key that you'll find when trying to generate these relations or create these relationships with CPAs, attorneys, um, you know, insurance agents, realtors is the only way you can really be heard is if you're making noise in a different way. And that different way is gen genuineness. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so if you have not yet started, I would strongly recommend and, um, you know, looking at how to build a capture page. Um, there's free ways to build capture pages. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a capture page is, a capture page is basically okay. that, that opt in. So okay. you might, yeah. you know, just on a general website, it says, Hey, download this free PDF. Um, you know, enter in your email that basically what they're doing is they're opting in to to join a email list and that email list becomes your community of leads and you can make different capture pages. So you can make capture page for uh, people who are shopping for homes that will segregate those contacts to home buyers. And then yeah. you can put a completely different capture page for 
people who are just interested in doing refinances. And then so now you have these two pockets or streams that you can market different material to that's more applicable to them. Yeah. But the beautiful part about it is those home shoppers will ultimately become home owners and those home owners will ultimately become refi pieces. Does that make yeah. sense? So that becomes okay. your book of business. And so, so, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you need an opt-in page right away. So don't sweat it if you can't create one or you don't create one. What you should ultimately create are accounts where you're already at. So if you're already on Facebook, look at how to create a what they call a business page, but you don't want to call it your business page. You want to call it your community, right? Yeah. Um, and it's ultimately a collection that's attached to your account of people who are already on the platform that have liked your page and now you you are on their stream. And uh, and same thing with like Instagram, you know, you can create a sub account on Instagram to start generating interest for content and information that you share on that platform. And then same thing with like YouTube or, or, or these other different platforms. Right. But yeah. ultimately, it all centrals back to your 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 hub, which your hub should, in my opinion, should be information, helpful information, free information that captures their attention and joins your community rather than a sale or using lingo that is intimidating. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. You definitely can jump into that pretty quickly with talking about, you know, interest rates, yeah. different product, you know, <laughs> loan products, start talking about arms and then like, everyone's going to be, ah. yeah, like, <laughs> uh, I don't get it, you know? And so they'll right. actually Next push channel. away. Yeah. Yeah. They'll push away from it. But it's, um, you know, it's important to, you know, be empathetic. You have to be, em you have to show empathy. And um, in order to show empathy is really just kind of view it like how you would view it. You know, like yeah. if, I don't know, you know, if you're in a relationship, if you're married, if you have kids, you have to kind of think about like in their shoes, like, well, how, like me all the time, I think, because my wife used to work in the industry, but, you know, for now she's a homemaker. You know, I was, I was, so much has changed since she's been in the industry that I always kind of use her as an example, right? Like how would her or her friends or my friends who are not in the industry, how would they respond to this specific content? Not only that, but from a consumer standpoint, even separate to the subject that we share our information on, how how does it capture our attention? And that's where stories come in, yeah. um, you know, because we, we typically like, there's this uh, one book, it's called um, Building a Story Brand. And man, I can't think of the name of the person that did it, but it's definitely a good book to have. Um, you know, I don't necessarily read books. I do a lot of audio books. And it, it basically talks about how to, how to story tell. And, yes. um, you know, and I was trying out some of that information. As a matter of fact, that video that you saw where I was the young kid who, who went up, that was, the, that was uh, an experiment from the lessons I learned within that book. And it was yeah. basically just to kind of bring your interests, have you kind of wonder who it is and that excitement ultimately led to you know the 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 punchline of, of the yeah, entire right story at the end of the video was great that you kind of just saved that for like right at the end yeah that, that was like a 20 minute video too I think. yeah 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 it was a longer one one of the longer ones and i, I was captivated the whole time so yeah, yeah. You did a great job with it yeah thank you thank you and um you know that was one of the, the things is that how i how do because the algorithms that you're going to find on these social platforms is not necessarily the likes or views it's actually engagement so how long were they watching the video and you know how many how many comments and that's why i'm a little bit more refined and asking for the comments but ultimately how how i would do it if i were a retail loan officer is i would say hey tag someone in the comment section right like tag them if they could use this information and ultimately what you're looking for is kind of that ripple effect where they'll tag someone that person will tag someone you know, my, my content gets shared a lot and, yeah. um, you know, it, it's people, it's, it's what they call organic reach, right? It's people who are already, you're already kind of connected to that connects you to other people. And that's where social media enables us to be in so many places at, at, at any different time, you know, yeah. at multiple times throughout the day. But the way that we then transition that collateral to generate relationships, with uh, insurance agents, realtors, attorneys, is now we get to show them proof. Like let's say if if a community of loan officers for whatever reason became valuable to you know a, an accountant, right, or a CPA, I could say, hey man, look, collectively over all my platforms, I have a, a community of over 15,000 loan officers. How strong is that, right? Yeah, that's, where, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> where yeah, you that's, can go that's, to a realtor and say, hey man, collectively I got a, I got a, a network of over 20,000 consumers who are who are interested in either buying a home, refinancing a home, 
or or need real estate property that you can have access to where you can help them get new insurance or you can help them do their taxes now that becomes a different dialogue than us trying to start a relationship like hey let me do your next refinance or hey let me do you know let me help out your client on your next purchase yeah it's a completely different message and it's going to be it's going to be perceived in a different way but if you start early and you know you really hone down and study that part and really invest the time, that is going to catapult you in front of people who have been in the business for ten years because that's beyond their their recognition. They they never thought about it. They're not doing it that way, and um, and that is going to set you apart from everyone else. But ultimately, that becomes social proof. And so if you go to like my Facebook page, the review section, there's a ton of reviews on there. That is my social proof. And so even on my Instagram highlights, I have just one highlight reel of just reviews. And so people who are coming on, I get comments because if you comment on the highlights, it goes to your DM. Yeah. And almost every single day I get people who say, hey, man, I just found your video, just read the reviews, just did this. And these are people that I didn't know, you know, they were not yeah. part of my community um, a month ago, and they're telling me and expressing to me that, hey, uh, I've really helped them improve their game or help them step up their game. And then what does that become? It becomes more social proof, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and, and that, I think, is the power because the reason why companies invest so much money towards these marketing hubs like Lending Tree or Found My Home or yeah. Lower My Bills is because they're paying them for the contacts. Well, we can become the lending tree. We can become the lower my, or I'm sorry, in, uh, uh, lower my bills. We can become that hub to the people that we're trying to generate lip relationship with, but we're doing it in a way where we become the, the authority. We become yes. the one that they want us. And if we could do it for them, then it ripples throughout that entire brokerage. And you don't need to hunt for the realtors. They're actually hunting for you. That's you know, because, the switch like completely on it. Yeah. And oh, that's because I think everyone, yeah, all the loan officers are out there doing the old school game of, yeah, I got to go into realtor offices and go and grab whoever I can go find the new realtors. I mean, right. you got to do something different. Like you said earlier to, to differentiate yourself, you got to do it a different approach and coming with content versus, you know, asking for leads is, is so much, so much different. Yeah. Right. Right. Cause the tonality of all of our other competitors, even some of our colleagues, are their tonality is with their handout, right? Like they want something. Um, they're asking for something. Well, now you have this ability where, hey, I got a I got a community of a lot of people within the Santa Clarita area or within the Seattle area, and I'd like to help you with your open house. And this is how you would scout that top realtor, right? And say, yeah. hey, man, I could send some people to your open house. Uh, let's do this. I, I'll go ahead and open it up to my community. Um, you know, just, just, you know, just allow me also to be opened up to your community. Here's some collateral that I made on five things you need to do before you buy your house. Right. And that please just share this with your community and I'll share yours. Now it's trade off of content. Yeah. Um, and that opens you up to then have reason and purpose to follow up or have reason to create that relationship. And it's, it's just a completely different vibe that I think is, is yet to be seen within our industry. You know, there might be some, I'm sure, that are doing it that way, but n none that are really doing it that way. Yeah. You know? Well, that's huge, and especially with this new new company and a, a fresh kind of a fresh approach at things, I think it's going to be huge. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, and I don't have any fears of doing videos. I haven't done many, and I'll have to get yeah different lighting and different environment because I've yeah. got to look at my picture down here. I'm a little foggy. But, <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is great. Yeah, man, it just takes time, you know, and, and uh, you know, when you do start it, the, I would say the hardest thing that I had to overcome was just being comfortable and getting out of my head. Like a lot of the earlier content that I shot, if you go to kind of the list of videos on YouTube and you go to oldest because uh, you, you can prioritize it that way. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of the content was just very awkward, felt very uncomfortable, but I forced myself to upload it anyway and yep. and and not stand in my own way because i knew through repetition is key and also at some point i can either take that video down or it's just going to be so old it's it's never even seen I'm gonna before have to go look those up i want to see your old video yeah <laughs> man you should you should check it out it's it's pretty funny actually and um you know but nonetheless if you, you do, when you create the process and it becomes therapeutic because it's uh, you're giving value and you're you know you're actually getting better at what you're trying to do 
And when you start seeing the return on those efforts, because you're not going to see the return for a while. It took me yeah. a very long time before I started seeing return. But when you start getting that traction, it becomes so helpful, becomes so valuable, you know. Yep. And I think that that's uh, that's definitely a, a, a key step to consider if you're trying to build a brand today. Let me show you everything I know. A jungle slide.